Robert Ressler was an FBI agent who in the 70s played a prominent role in psychologically profiling those who committed violent crimes. He is credited for coining the term serial killer and was the inspiration for the leading character in Mindhunter. He interviewed dozens of murderers throughout his career and came up with the first serial killer profile. Through his efforts and the efforts of his colleagues, such as John Douglas, they were able to use these profiles to track down notorious criminals throughout the 70s and 80s. They pioneered the research and data collection of serial killers and gave us insight into what potentially creates one. Perhaps the most controversial question in criminology, law, or theology is whether they are born this way or if their choices and actions are a consequence of their childhood and environment. While it truly seems the answer is one or the other, the truth is both of these theories do lead to the truth. Most serial killers did suffer some sort of trauma as a child, and we have a great deal of research that does support the theory that certain genes can predispose people to violence. It's never a clear-cut case as to what makes a serial killer. And there's certainly not a blanket condition that can be applied to the vast majority. A large distinction of what separates serial killers from other murderers are their motives to kill. Most violent crimes are due to disputes, gangs, family affairs, and usually committed because of a personal vendetta. A psycho killer, however, is driven by their instinct to kill and will satisfy this urge regardless whether or not the victim has wronged them. Empathy and compassion are nullified in the pursuit of fulfilling this perpetual desire to end life. Grover Godwin, a serial killer profiler, collected data from 107 serial killers and their 726 victims through FBI and local police department sources. Almost 90% of the victims were strangers to the killer, which is why they were able to get away with their crimes long enough to do it again. Solving a random murder is nearly impossible. With no link between the victim and the killer, there are no immediate leads to go on, and it takes longer for the investigators to make progress. Another study conducted by Eric Hickey who created a database of around 400 serial killers, concluded that 84% were white males and the rest were African Americans. On average, the first murder would be committed at the age of 27, most of them being exceptionally skillful in how they present themselves, charismatic. They were seen as more agreeable and likable in person, therefore making it even more difficult to apprehend. Underneath the blanket term so often used today, there are actually four different types of serial killers. The visionary, often driven by inner demons, commit their crimes at the command of an imagined internal or external voices, which they perceive to be real. A visionary, more often than not, suffers from psychosis or another form of mental illness, with the killings taking place during or after a psychotic break. The most dangerous exhibited attribute of a visionary is their method of choosing their victim, or lack thereof. Most serial killers have a preference, male, female, a specific ethnicity or profession. Prostitutes, for example, are a highly targeted group for serial killers. A visionary, however, has no method of selection. Their victims are selected purely at random and not rooted in logic or preference. Their murderous agenda is completely synchronized and driven by their internal madness. Herbert Mullen, for example, a visionary serial killer in the 70s, murdered 13 people and believed that the American casualties in the Vietnam War were somehow preventing a catastrophic earthquake in California. 
and as the war began to settle, resulting in a lower number of casualties, he claimed a supreme voice pleaded with him asking him to raise the number of human sacrifices. Mullen suffered from schizophrenia, which could have been agitated by his use of drugs, such as LSD in his earlier years. Mission Oriented This type of serial killer is generally not psychotic and has a desire to accomplish a goal of some sort. Dexter from the series Dexter was written as a mission-oriented serial killer with a need to satisfy an urge, but accomplish a goal while doing it. These killers typically target a specific group of people and believes that by getting rid of these individuals, he or she is somehow making the world a better place according to their own personal standards. As previously mentioned, victims can be found heavily in street workers. The homeless is also a group that are often victims of a mission-oriented serial killer. These murderers are highly compulsive, but not legally insane. They have the ability to hold long-term jobs and are capable of living in the same geographic location in which they kill for many years. Some mission-oriented serial killers even believe that the victim should be grateful for their removal, and in some cases believe their victim is being cleansed of their wrongdoing. This is associated with ritualistic behavior and is common in this breed of serial killers. Hedonistic. This type of serial killer seeks thrill and derives pleasure from killing. Forensic psychologists have identified three types of hedonistic serial killers. The lustful killer, the thrill killer, and the comfort killer. All three subtypes of hedonistic serial killers commit the crime for their own personal pleasure. Jeffrey Dahmer is a prime example of this variety of killer. He is classified as a hedonistic serial killer focused on lust, which is tied heavily into sexual pleasure. Whereas thrill-seeking hedonistic serial killers do not commit their crimes for sexual gratification and rather for the rush the murder gives them. They don't drag out this process and they don't spend their time picking out their victims. It's rather a very spontaneous act. It's often compared to a hunter letting its spray run so they can engage in their hunt. A comfort hedonistic killer, however, is often female and often kill those close to them for financial gain. These types of killers can put in years of effort between victims in an attempt to avoid suspicion and will often use a method of killing that is difficult to detect, such as poison. Lastly, the power or control-oriented serial killer. Usually referred to as the most dangerous category of serial killers, they are typically stone-cold psychopaths with no sense of empathy, guilt, or love. They are meticulous planners of their crimes, and actually fall into the FBI's organized category of predators because of this. They are often found to be charming, charismatic, and highly intelligent. Power and control oriented serial killers will often physically assault their victims, not for the act of lust like the hedonistic killer, but for the feeling of power and domination. Oftentimes, they will return to the deceased body of the victim to repeat this act to perpetuate the domination and control, as a deceased person has no way of rejecting the act, and they have the ultimate control over the situation. Ted Bundy is the example of the power and control oriented serial killer. Not only did he portray every characteristic of this category of predator, but he felt he could control the outcome as well. So what makes a serial killer? The most common trait is childhood abuse that they experienced even in the infant stage. Their minds have suppressed the trauma and therefore have suppressed their emotional response, which over time breeds a mind that doesn't know the appropriate way to deal with it, ultimately leading to the underdevelopment of their emotions like empathy. And while this explains a percentage of serial killers, it doesn't explain all. It turns out the more we research serial killers, the less we seem to know. And the more we dissect this substrata of criminology from a scientific standpoint, 
with a less philosophical view, it becomes harder to understand why these evil thoughts emerge in the first place. How does a person become a serial killer? Let me know below in the comments what your thoughts are on this topic. How does one end up being a serial killer? Do you think it's purely due to a treacherous upbringing? Or are there genetic factors at play? Share this video so we can open up a larger conversation on this topic. Some of the best results come from a community talking and bouncing ideas off of each other. And if you want a good scare and a lesson on history of lore, check out our second channel, Rank Paranormal. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next upload.